John, Captain this side in a, in a Guinness Pro 12 time, that's going to be uh, some of the Asian for yourself personally. Yeah, team's not picked yet, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I've never played in the final before. Um, I don't know many guys in the group have. Maybe Fox did at Claremont. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I, you know, I said I spoke to the boys before the game, and I, you know, I believe that this is a big club. You know, the history of the place, the, the position of the place kind of dictates that. And I knew that when I came here, so it's, um, it's really pleasing that we're in a final. I feel like it's where you know, we deserve to be at the top table, but it's now about you know, winning and delivering and staying, and staying up there. Did you, did you miss out with Barnes Cove by season? Uh, the year after I left, they made the final, and the year after that, they, they won it. What were your emotions watching that, and is that something you bring into this weekend? Um, I, yeah, I think you're... Every player is envious of, you know, you know, successful teams. I think, you know, you look at what Saris have, have created, and these teams. You always, well, I certainly am. I'm always slightly envious of these guys having these experiences and getting to play in these big games. So, um, yeah, I was, you know, envious of the, of the guys, and but you know, really happy. A lot of my friends played my game, and they, you know, speak to DTH and these guys, and you know, they told me, you know, how amazing it was on the occasion, and it was, you know, just great to be able to win something like that. Did you see the potential when you came here, John? Do you think you know, the Scarlets could, could make the final? Um, so I, yeah, I, I believe the club is a big club. Um, we haven't always produced the results. We've, we've shown glimpses possible of the year. And, um, yeah, I think the squad is, you look at the start of the year and people are sort of murmurings outside the group about, oh, you know, have, you know, have a look at Scarlets, you know, putting together quite a good squad. And yeah. I think we've been quite lucky with injuries. We've, you know, everyone seems to be coming fit at the right time of the year. I don't think we've got hardly anyone from our first choice sort of squad injured at the moment, which is almost unheard of at this time of year. So, um, and the guys who are playing are playing out of their skins you know, across the board. The young guys coming through are playing very well. The, the international boys are playing at the top of their game. You know, the two Lions boys are you know, playing some exceptional rugby. And uh, the man in the number seven jersey is making a few fun as well. Yeah, and I'd, <laughs> he's done that for the last three years, so it's not really a surprise to me, to be honest. I'm, Slightly baffled by by his constant omission, it's something I just can't get my head around. But um, I don't pick that team. Uh, I know the boys here play with him week in, week in, week out, and see what he's doing. You know, regularly topping the stats, regularly getting man of the match. I don't, I don't really know what, you, what more you can do. And that's for him probably the probably lets him sort of sleep a bit easier at night. There's, there's probably not more he could do to get out. That muds the back row trio caused havoc at the weekend, didn't it? I mean, the arms and legs and everything all over the place, and you're going to have to sort them out. Yeah, I think that's the plan most weeks. But yeah, no, they've got they've got a good back row. Obviously, two British Lions, um, Tommy O'Donnell as well, and they've got a Diesel coming off the bench. They've got you know they've got quality there. Um, but I think you know I think Leinster got a pretty useful back row. I think we you know we dealt with them quite well. Yeah. Um, you know the stats sort of you know, back that up. You know we turn them over a lot on the ground ourselves. So um, yeah, I think we're sort of we're doing all right there ourselves. So yeah. concentrate on ourselves. But yeah, I think yeah they are a big part of what they do there. And certainly guys like Stander is one of their, their go-to guys. Yeah. Yes, if you uh, if you silence him as we saw with Saracens, they go into their shell a bit. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about going in the shell, but um, you know if you've got a guy who's carrying 20 times a game week in week out. You know, you stop him making hard yards. That's you know, 20 carries a game is a, is a is a big chunk of any team's carries anyway. So yeah. you, you stop him and you, you put him on the ground early. Um, it becomes easier, but you know they're, they're very good at, at doing that. Very fit, get, very good at getting front foot ball and using their powerful carriers. Mm. What's the sense among the squad? You had to win obviously on Monday, John. Do you feel excitement? Is it nerves? What do you feel? The boys are looking forward to this weekend. I think it's just excitement to be honest. The boys are buzzing. It's been a really good feeling about the place for a number, a number of weeks, you know, months potentially during the Six Nations. You could tell the guys were really enjoying the challenge of the internationals being away and they thrived in that period. And then we came back and traditionally we've maybe struggled in that period, but the, I think we seem to get better and better. Um, so yeah, I think the boys are just excited and it's a testament to the group, you know, we got someone sent off after 37 minutes of the RDS and it didn't, didn't put the guys off, didn't, there was no panicking or Distress. It was. It was more excitement that we could. You know, this. You know, it's a great challenge for us to try and step up to. So does that, does that give you the confidence that you know? Obviously, there's not a lot of players might not be used to an occasion like, like the one on Saturday that there won't be any danger of freezing on a big day. No, I don't. Think, I'd be very surprised. I think 
most of the guys across the board have played uh, a lot of sort of top rugby. You know, they obviously the game on judgment days. A big stadium, so some of the guys perhaps haven't played international rugby. They've, they've had that sort of um, atmosphere of playing in a big stadium. So, um, and the fact we've won some big games on the road this year as well, that's, that sort of shows the character and the, the sort of mindset of the boys. What's the Aviva like when it's packed with uh, Bering Irishmen? Pretty loud, yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the sport goes this weekend. Um, leaving the leaving the RDS the weekend, a lot of Leinster fans are saying they'll be supporting us. So, yeah. uh, I say a lot, maybe five and something. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> but you silenced them, didn't you? It was yeah. like a morgue. Yeah, well, that was great. That's nice as, as an away team to do that. Yeah. And uh, it was it was amazing. The, the Scarlet fans there before the game. There was I don't know a couple hundred or a hundred maybe. It was fantastic the sort yeah. of noise they made. Um, yeah, and you sort of hope. I guess we probably would. We were going as underdogs, and if I was going to a game, I'd generally support the underdog as, as a neutral. So, so you, hope, you hope you pick up a few, a few supporters. Does, here there. does the Munster crowd count for a number of points? Does it make life difficult, uh, or do we, or do we, in this day and age, do we overemphasise it? I think it's maybe overemphasised yeah. a little bit. Um, I can, it can maybe help sway referees, but then you, yeah. you got someone like you know Nigel. I don't think he's going to be swayed by a crowd. He's very strong referee, and that's not going to be a consideration. So. And you know, you know, with the RDS, that's one of the hardest places to go win. And we just won there with 14 yeah. men. The boys won at, at home and um, during the Six Nations. So, um, yeah, I think it gives them a bit of a buzz, but I think it gives our boys a bit of a kick too. Yeah. Have you won at the RDS before? Never won at the RDS, no. Really? That's the first time. In Have you won years. at the Aviva? Uh, no, but I won at Croke Park, which is, which is pretty special. Yeah. But. Yeah, the Aviva's a tough place to play. Well, you could uh, a Dublin hat trick, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be alright, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. How was Steph being done after after last weekend? Um, he just got he's kept his head down. He's he's just disappointed in what happened. Um, he didn't mean it, obviously. Yeah. No, no one intentionally does that. Um, a unique sort of set of circumstances. The guys, the way they hit each other, and you know, Samson bumped into him as well. Yeah. But, um, he's just waiting for Wednesday. See what happens. That's what he can do. Really, he's he's pretty gutted. Thankfully, you know we we won. Yeah. I think he would probably have been a lot darker if if um, we'd lost. But I think he was. I said after the game, he's a huge part of how we won the game. And anyway, you know, you look at the tries we scored and his influence in those tries is, is big. So it's easy to point fingers. But thankfully, you know, we we got the win and hopefully he's free to play on Wednesday. I can't remember if you played in the opening game against Munster out there. But yeah. How can you almost believe that you progressed from the team that butchered as many chances as you did that day to the team that can do what you've, yeah. you've done to the Ospreys and Leinster? Yeah, I can't really remember that game. It seems it is so uh, it's a long time ago now. It seems such a long way away. But I think the first few games were quite frustrating, and there was a you know there was a sense of frustration growing outside the group as well. But because I think everyone thought you know we have a we'd create quite a good group of players. So um, but yeah, I think. No one panicked, and the coach especially didn't panic. It would have been very easy to, you know, three games and three losses, um, but they didn't. We just, you know, kept plugging away, and we've, you know, we kind of picked up a bit of momentum at the right times. We didn't, you know, we played some tough games. We've ground out some sort of ugly games, but we've also, you know, started to play some really exciting rugby as the weather's dried up as well. But if you're going to play against the Scouts, you look at that back line, you think, oh bloody hell, mm. who's coming at me next? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It is. Isn't I think it? the boys are. Yeah, across the border playing, you know, some really great rugby. You know, Pat just come back and playing well, and there's guys coming off the bench adding a lot as well. Yeah, um, you know, the two centres I thought have been, you know, outstanding really the last last month or so. You know, especially Scott, you know, missed out on the Lions. Uh, I was gutted for him. I thought he would have gone. Um, but you see the way he's played. He's one of my best players every week for the last X number of games. And the guys on the edges are doing the thing, and Johnny's obviously Johnny and Nichols come over and come into yeah. sort of rich vein form as well. Yeah. So that that must give you a lot of confidence up step, up front. You know, if you can get the ball, you know something might happen. Yeah, we well, you know we've got to got to get the ball to them. Yeah. Uh, we did, quite didn't give them as much ball as we would have liked the weekend, but we showed even with you know scraps really is what we were working off at the weekend at times. And in the first half, we, you know, we create some great opportunities even when we're we're man on man. The guys. We've got players that could create, you know, opportunities out of nothing. And a great backup goal kicker. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, Sanchez. Like, Sanchez, fair. Sanchez done work for. It. Yeah, he's done. He's probably don't see. He does a lot of work. He's always had a few nudges at the end of training, and I guess he wasn't probably expecting at the start of the year to be a backup yeah. kicker in a semi-final and a final. But 
he's one of these guys who doesn't really bother him. No. Well, he looked very cool, and yeah. Oh yeah, that's you know that's you know that he probably he probably knew how important the kicks were at the weekend. Um, that's you know that's big pressure, and he's you know he's a big pressure, big game player. So it's interesting to know whether those two penalties are the most important contribution or well, that turnover on the line. I mean, that was just sensational. Yeah, there was a couple a couple of big moments in the game, and I think the boys you could see the reactions and the, the guys growing in the game, but. Um, yeah, you could pinpoint a lot of points, but um, yeah, it was, it was just a great performance, great uh, way to win. Mm.